Let's read the question. SMRT Private Limited has the following balances on 1st April 2014. Now, in this topic, dates are super, super important, so we need to highlight them. As at 1st April 2014, we have motor vehicles balance of 200,000 and accumulated depreciation of 80,000. Alright, remember, motor vehicles refer to the non-current asset itself, while accumulated depreciation tells us that this motor vehicles in the business has been losing value over time. And this ADK refers to the accumulated loss of this set of motor vehicles since the time they bought it. Okay, let's read on. On 30th September, SMRT bought a new bus for 45000 On the same day, it sold an old bus for 16000 on credit to SBS. So it's a very busy day. 30th of September is a very busy day. This bus, the bus that they actually sold, was bought on 1st June 2012. Now if you notice something, we have been mentioning the year 2014 all along all of a sudden now, we are talking about the year 2012, which is actually two years before that. Okay, so pay attention to dates. This old bus was actually bought two years before the year 2014. SMRT depreciates its buses at 10% per annum on net book value. Now, let's just stop there and ask ourselves, what does net book value actually mean? This question is actually trying to hint to us the method of depreciation that we should deploy in this question. Let's pause there and do some quick revision. We have learned that there are two types of depreciation method in our syllabus. One is the straight line method and the other is the reducing balance method. When we see the keyword net book value, it actually means we are using the reducing balance method because the formula of the reducing balance method is percentage times net book value. Alright, so the business is actually using the reducing balance method. Now, what is net book value? For those who are unsure, it actually refers to the cost minus the accumulated depreciation cost of the motor vehicle minus the accumulated loss that it has uh, suffered up to date. Let's move on. The question goes on to say, a full year's depreciation is to be charged in the year of purchase and none in the year of sale. This is what I call the accounting policy. Okay, the policy is actually created by the accountant to make life easy. We will discuss about this more shortly. So question A says, prepare the accumulated depreciation account for the year ended 31st March 2015. And this is a five mark question that a lot of students struggle with. I'm now going to show you how to use a timeline to actually tackle this question easily. Let's begin by drawing a timeline with the dates given to us. Okay, so to find out the accounting period, we need to pay attention to the year end of the business. The business's year end is 31st March 2015. So 31st March 2015. When will I start? If the full year is 12 months, I will actually start the year on 1st April 14. Alright, so the first thing you need to do is to make sure you know the months in the year. And if I end on 31st March, I would actually start 1st April the year before. So this is the year end that the question is actually asking us about. Year ended 31st March 15. Okay, let's put the information in here. The question says that the business has the following balances on 1st April 14. So this is 1st April 14, motor vehicles, cost price is 200,000 and accumulated depreciation is already calculated for you at 80,000. Alright, and then, so this is, the, this is the period that they've given you the information. Let's move on. 
on 30th September. So where is 30th September? Somewhere here. SMRT bought a new bus for 45,000. Okay, so I can randomly call this C. Why do I call it C? Because if you've practiced enough, you will know that this style of question actually is going to involve asset A, B and C. Just follow me and I'll guide you along. So it buys this asset which I have choose to label as C. It buys it for 45,000. On the same day, it sold an old bus for 16,000. So let's write the sold just right below. Both events are happening on the same day, 30th September. It sells an old bus on credit to SBS. Now let me name that old bus A. Okay? An old bus, uh, let me name that A. Read on, it was bought on 1st June 2012. Now, this A is an old bus. It wasn't bought on 1st April. It was bought before that. That's why they use the word old. And let's read carefully. When was it bought? 1st June 2012. So, looks like I need to backtrack my timeline. Alright? Which is why I've left some space above because I need to draw the years before. So, let's do it right now. Let's draw one year before. So, if this year ends... 31st March 15, the year before will end 31st March 14 and I will start this year 1st April 13. Look at the year first, the date 1st June 2012. Does it fall in this period? Looks like it doesn't. So what do I do? I draw one more year before that. Okay, so I will end 31st March 13 and I'll start 1st April 12. Now, can I fit 1st June into this timeline? I certainly can. Alright, so where will 1st June be? Somewhere here. Okay, 1st June 2012. What happened here? It says that this asset A that I sold here was bought. So let me write here. How much did I buy it for? I bought it for 30000 Okay, so... I have now drawn three years of timeline. But which year is the question asking me to prepare the account for? Only for the year ended 2015, which is the last year. So for clarity, let's number the years in our timeline. This is year one, year two, and this is year three. All right, to get our year three answer correct, we must start our workings from year one because we are talking about selling an asset that was bought here. So what it means is that the asset that was bought here will start losing value from the year that it was bought all the way till the year that it was sold. And since this topic is about depreciation, it's important for us to know that. Next, we actually have to calculate depreciation right now. Okay, let's read the accounting policy. It says a full year's depreciation is charged in the year of purchase and none in the year of sale. Which is the year of purchase? In year one, I bought asset A, right? I bought. So A for A, the year of purchase is year one. It says give it a full year's depreciation. Why does the policy say that? Because actually, if I bought it only midway, I have to apportion my calculation by the number of months, which is from June to March. Okay, but by giving it a full year, it saves me the trouble of apportioning the calculation. So let's do our workings right now to calculate depreciation for A, asset A for the first year. Cost price is 30000 Okay, remember the formula? It says percentage times net book value. What is net book value? Cost minus accumulated depreciation. Okay, so I've got the cost price 30K here. Do I have an accumulated depreciation for this asset that I just bought? I don't. It's a brand new asset that is only going to start losing value in this year. So there's no old loss to minus off. So if there isn't, I will straight away multiply by the percentage given to me in the question. 
So that means the depreciation for A in the first year is 3,000. Let's move on to the second year. Do I still have A in the second year? I do. Okay, the question doesn't say that we sold A in the second year. So we must continue to depreciate A in the second year. A's cost price is still 30K, but at the second year, it has the first year of loss already calculated. And that is actually the accumulated depreciation. So don't forget to minus the 3K which came from the first year and then I times my percentage given to me. Alright, this should give us 2,700 for the second year. In the third year, what are we left with? We still have A but the question says none in the year of sale. That means in the year of sale for the asset that you sell, there is no depreciation. But that is only for the asset you are selling. It doesn't refer to the other assets in the business. Now, you also have C which we have annotated, but seems like something is not accounted for, right? Okay, let's revisit the question. Question says that on 1st April, we have motor vehicles worth 200,000. If I have 200,000 of motor vehicles here, but before that, I'm only talking about A that is worth 30,000, it means that there is something else besides A. Okay, so let's name the other one A plus B amounting to 200,000. If A is actually worth 30K, we can do simple math to find out that B is actually worth 170K. Alright, so we have another asset here which is called B as well. And we also need to depreciate that. Okay, so let's proceed to do the workings right now. We know that A has no depreciation. So let's calculate the depreciation for B. For that, we need to know the cost price of B followed by its accumulated depreciation before we multiply by the percentage. What is the cost price of B? We've discussed that the cost price is $170,000. What is the accumulated depreciation of B? Let's look at what information we have. The question says that the accumulated depreciation of 80,000 is actually for A and B added together. So if I take 80,000, which is for A and B added together, and I minus off the depreciation, the accumulated depreciation for A, which is actually 5,700 for the two years, I actually get the accumulated depreciation for B. Then I proceed to multiply by 10% to get the answer, which is 9570. Next, let's calculate the depreciation for C. C was bought in the third year. Although it was bought midway, the question says give a full year's depreciation in the year of purchase. For C, the year of purchase is the third year. So even though it's bought midway, just allocate a full year's depreciation. So that will be 45k times 10%, which would give us 4,500. So the question says, what is the accumulated depreciation for the last year? It will be 0 for A, and 9570 plus 4500 for B and C. Hey, thank you for staying through the entire video. I hope the video has bring you much understanding to how to do this topic well. So if you like the video, remember to click like and don't forget to subscribe.